Hello, I thought I'd make this quick video to talk a little bit about black fur. It's always a bit tricky and I think it takes a lot longer than people realise because actually sometimes when you look at a reference photo you think, well, you know, it's a black dog and I can just put lots of black and maybe a little bit of grey and then it will, then it will be fine. But what happens is if you just lay black down, and there's nothing wrong with black at all, and a lot of artists have said that they've heard that it's not a good idea to use black. Black is, you can be made up from lots of different colours, otherwise it looks flat. And I, I kind of agree, but sometimes black is just black. But the way that you can get around it looking flat is by adding different colours in whilst you're working. So, for example, these black eyebrows, I've added lots of blues. I've added the dark indigo. I'm going to be adding the manganese violet. I've added a little bit of mauve and sky blue and then worked up through the greys as well. The polychromic chromos greys are really good but just wanted to to just show how different colors within the black really gives it some lovely shine because what you'll find is that even though it's a black dog when it's in the sun it's really quite light and gray but it's not as light as I've got it here it needs to be a lot darker so I'm going to be adding lots of different colors into the shine I'm going to be adding some dark parts into the lighter parts because otherwise it just ends up looking a little bit stripy so just going to concentrate on this part of the eyebrow for now and I'm going to apply this to the whole drawing so this eyebrow here Next to the very dark black part around the eye, there's some lovely purples and lovely blues. And you might just think, oh my goodness, I don't want to add lots of different colours in. It's going to look cartoony and really strange. But actually, if you really look at the reference photo, you will notice that there are so many different colours made up within the shine. So I've added a little bit of the manganese violet. I'm going to go in with a little bit of mauve, especially closer to the black, because I don't want to just colour in the highlighted parts with purples. I want to just add a subtle transition between the dark part and the lighter part because it's not as stripy as I have it here. I'm going to add some of this mauve into this darker area as well. And then I think we need to go in with a little bit of blue. But I'm just using a very light hand and using kind of medium pencil strokes, not long. We don't want this dog to look too shaggy, <laughs> but it's not the short hair like you have around the nose. So it does make a difference, the length of the pencil stroke that you're laying down. So I've added a little bit of mauve, all very subtle. Now I'm gonna go in with some Indian Throne Blue, which is a really lovely dark blue. And I'm gonna add that around the black as well. I'm going to add it a little bit into the shine, and definitely around the little eyebrow area there. And I think that's one of the joys about drawing is that you can enhance the photograph. It doesn't have to be an exact copy. So although you're looking for the colours that are in there and as you do more and more drawings and you kind of gain confidence and experience you'll start to notice a lot more than you did before and to begin with it it feels like you're not really moving forward at all but if you look back and I always say, which is a really good experiment to do, just to see how far you've come, is to try and draw the same drawing again that you did possibly six months or a year ago. Just try that same reference photo and notice how many more details, how many more colours, all of these different things that you will notice that you didn't notice the first time round. It's a bit like when you learnt to to drive a car. I don't know if you found this, but when you first did it, it was so many things that you had to think about, you know, checking the mirror and changing into first gear. And it just felt like way too much information to do at the, at the very, very beginning. But after a while, and now if you've been driving for a few years, you don't even think about it. So I think it's easy to get a bit caught up on what we don't know. But if you look back over time, it's amazing how much you 
have learnt in that time. But just wanted to add this lovely blue and I want to make sure that I do put it into the shadow as well because I do want a lovely subtle transition between these two areas. I don't want them to be a real stripe. So I'm just going to add that in as well. Add it into the lighter parts as well for a smooth transition. There needs to be a lot more blue here. This whole area needs to be a lot darker, but for now I'm just going to put it into this little section because I can see myself getting sidetracked and ending up going over across to the face. But no, I'm going to just concentrate on this little area here. So you can see it's starting to look quite blue. And that's okay, don't panic, because if you do look at a black, shiny dog, you will notice quite a lot of blue, and we will be going back over with the greys, just to tone it down a little bit. So I'm still using a light hand, so I'm not getting lots and lots of pigment in. It's not like I'm pressing hard and then it's going to be difficult to cover up. We're putting this blue in to really enhance the shine and if you do want a little bit more pigment just putting it over a couple of times in the same area not pressing any harder just going back over and adding a little bit more and you see that's looking pretty blue but it's also looking quite shiny another favorite of mine is the Caput Morton Violet so if I'm really looking hard at the reference photo, you don't see as much of this colour, but it's going to be that, again, subtle transition between the two. And mixing this lovely violet with the blue as well gives a great purpley colour, like a, a, a rich purple. The Caput Morton Violet is just such a lovely colour. So I'm just adding it to the edges, I'm adding it to any place that I think it might show up. And I'm going over the areas that need to be a little bit darker with this colour as well, because I know that I'm going to be adding more on top. Going back over the black. So by adding all of these lovely colours, there's just no way that it can look flat because you've just got so many different layers that make it up. Okay. I think I want to go in with a little bit of a lighter blue. So the sky blue is quite a good one. And also the luminance have a lovely range of blues and greys so and the pablos too actually they have silver greys and steel greys and they've got a lot more blue pigment in them than the polychromos do but sometimes i think it can be quite confusing to have lots and lots of different colors when you can actually get a similar result with just a few you don't have to buy all of the colors it will work just as well I'm just going to add this light blue to the eyebrow a little bit And the other thing is adding these lighter colours, it just creates a soft, subtle looking fur. So I'm going to go in with dark grey, Payne's grey, just sharpening it so it's a nice sharp point. This is actually getting quite small now. And I want to start adding little bits of this dark grey into the... Oh, see, I've broken the nib already. I'm starting to press a little bit harder because I know that I'm not going to be putting much more in. So I want to add this grey. You'll notice that there are kind of lines of darker colour. I want a broken up line, so I'm just using little scribbly techniques to join them together without just doing one line because it's a broken up line. 
and I want to add some of this Payne's Grey to the lighter part as well. So darkening this up, adding some of that to the lighter parts again, just helping with the transition between the two. I've noticed that there's a darker kind of ridge here. So I'm just going over a couple of times with the Payne's Grey, not pressing any harder, just going over a couple of times. And then coming down into here, we might need to add a little bit of black in at the end, just to darken it up, but we can map in with this color. Adding a little bit up here. Again, we don't want that stripe. Softening everything. Adding a little bit in here. It's quite a defined line. Just using little scribbly techniques. And then we're going to definitely add more of this Payne's Grey towards the eyebrow and into that lighter part. So it breaks it up. Same into this little section here. Some of the hairs are longer, some are shorter. Some of the longer dark bits go through the shine and attach to the next section of dark, which is up here. So adding all of that in as well. And then this area is going to be a lot darker. Adding these little subtle dark, some long, some short. So you can see that this dark part and this really dark part are starting to be joined by this bridge. It's not such a dramatic stripe. There are some dark bits within. We've got the lovely colours underneath. Got some of the dark hairs coming down into the light. Just breaking up. So can you see the difference between this area and then this area that I haven't worked on? It's a lot more of a subtle transition. Although this is still very dark, it bleeds and blends up towards that part instead of having a very light stripe and a very dark area. So I'm going to use this technique and this method to go all the way back over every area that I've worked on. So this is why it takes time to build up through these layers. And you can't really miss any stage out because it's all of these tiny little subtleties that make up the, the little lovely details, the shine in the fur. I'm just going to add black where I've added the Payne's Grey, just to darken up some of it, especially in the middle. Little scribbly lines to kind of join them together. And just darkening up that little section, light hand, but you can see how the black really shows up. So you don't need too much at all. You can see how that's starting to come together. I'm going to add a little bit more of a warm grey now, because you can use the warms and the colds together. There's no rules about sticking with one or the other. And even though there's lots of blues in this Labrador, you will find that there's lots of warm colours as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of warmth down here. And a little bit of warmth on the edge as well. Don't want a complete stripe, so I'm going to break that up a little bit. And adding some warmth into there. See, I do have a na naturally heavy hand, and so it's something I'm constantly having to pull back on. Especially when we get to these stages. At the beginning, I'm quite good at having a light hand. 
but as we're coming to the, the the kind of final layers it's it's so easy to try and rush and to push a little bit harder just to get more color in so just adding this lovely warm gray And you can see it's just starting to join these areas together. It does take time. Colour pencils are notoriously slow. And they can be a bit frustrating, but it is worth it in the end. Just adding a bit more Payne's Grey into that little section. Little darker areas little dark areas here, definitely some lines in there with more of a darker grey. Breaking up the edge a little bit. So I just want you to notice the difference between this section and then this section. So I'm going to be doing that across there. You can see how this is a lot more subtle and it's all bringing it together. So I'm going to continue and carry on, but I really hope this helped you to think about different colours and the way that it makes up through black fur. It's certainly not straightforward, there's lots of different things to think about, but it's just about building up through the different colours, building up through the layers, um, and, th and thinking about how you're going to create that lovely dense fur and then a really lovely soft shine. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you did for more of these, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.